Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to episode number one of Playing With House Money on the Toilets to Titles Network. I'm Iceman, aka Chris Hine 10, aka one half of At Is This Just Fantasy Football? And this is my co host, DJ Prue, aka Prue Baby 10, aka the self proclaimed Live Bet King. How are you today, sir? Uh, just happy to be here, man. Good day. It's a good day. I'm doing great. So uh, we can drop so, the baby too, just you know, true true works until until I win some people some money at least. They need to follow you on the Twitter though, man. They, they definitely find, do. Not only for, not only for the free bets, but you know, just for the general good humor I'm that you time. provide daily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, this is episode number one of Playing With House Money. Um, yeah. We have been looking forward to this day, to say the least. Uh, we've got a few months of, of baseball and, and MLS to to see us through to the new football season. Uh, and that's the new football season on you know this side of the Atlantic, and it's the, the new soccer season uh, back in the UK and, and in the rest of Europe. So we hope that you'll come along for the ride with us. Um, you can find all of our content, including any articles and episodes at toilets to titles.com. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button uh, along with any comments. Uh, if you have any comments, then, you know, or questions, absolutely fire them at us and we will answer them on next week's episode or on the Twitter you can find us at PW underscore house money. We'll answer any of your questions there. If there's anything we talk about on the show, any bets that you're interested in, any bets that you disagree with and you're fading, then absolutely like let us know. Definitely um, those. Definitely def those. Definitely those. If there's any that you're tailing or that you like, again, let us know those and hopefully we can all win some money. Um, you know, if you'd like to interact with us beyond that. Uh, discuss any of the bets, anything that we're not covering on the show that you you think we should, uh, then absolutely let us know. Or if you just want to talk about the upcoming NFL, fantasy football, or college football seasons, uh, then reach out to either of us um, to get into the Toilets to Titles Gilded chat um, where we, we have our own uh, channel. We'll be discussing lots of stuff about betting over the next couple of months, like we said, on the MLB side. Uh, we have the MLS still ongoing, so we'll be talking a lot about that. Um, and like I say, just really looking forward to football season uh, when we can really kick into high gear. And I mean, at the moment, we seem to be doing okay as it is with what we've got. Um, talking of, you know, what's going on in the MLB this weekend? I was going to say, let's uh, pump our brakes a little bit, man. we got another 100 games. But... Um... Yeah, not only do I obviously love MLB season, but um, I've realized that the, mo the most, the thing I love the most is like you really have to pay attention to each team as the season goes on, as days go on. Um, catch guys in heaters, catch guys in cold streaks and whatnot. So um, this weekend actually has basically every team that has been good to us for the last week or two. Um, Nationals have cooled down a little bit, but Saturday I love them against the Braves. Um, Trevor Williams is on the mound for the Nationals. He's not been good, uh, to say the least. He's 60 innings, 61 hits, so I love the Braves to, to really rack up some hits this week. Um, Acuna, Matt Olson, Austin Riley, uh, Ozzie Albies. Uh, I like Orlando Arcia, too. Um, all should be playable. All can probably go for two total bases. So love that game Saturday. I also love Mariners Angels Saturday night. Um, the Mariners starting pitcher only made it through two innings his first day, his first start. So I'm interested to see how the Angels kind of attack that. They've been their bats have been pretty hot too. Um, there's a lot of guys I love on that in that game, especially on Seattle. Um, Sunday. I like um, the Diamondbacks against the Tigers. As you can tell, uh, you at least, uh, Arizona is a very fun team to gamble on in the MLB. Um, once we can get into a little more depth, I think you guys will 
really understand why. Um, we also got Twins versus Blue Jays. Louis Varlin's on the mound for the Twins. Um, Gaussman's pitching, so I'm staying away from Minnesota's hitters. But um, I really love Bo and Kevin Kiermeyer this weekend. So um, that's a game I, sh- I-, I wouldn't be shocked if we see a ton of runs either. So In the Blue Jays um, game. Yeah, the Blue Jays twins. Yeah, the twins have been sneaky this this uh this last couple of weeks. It's either been horrible games, one, two runs, or six, seven, eight runs, and it's like three guys have two, three hits. It's insane. Um so Gaussman is obviously hot right now. His splitter's probably the most unhittable pitch in the MLB right now, but um he's 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 left some over the plate this year, as everyone does. And uh Toronto's been red hot. I mean, with Kiermaier, Whit Merrifield, and, and Chapman in the, the back end of their lineup, I mean, they've been incredibly hard to get out in innings. So, yeah, I wouldn't doubt that game. The over in that game will probably look pretty good. It's probably going to be somewhere between eight and a half, like eight and a half, nine and a half maybe. But um, And then Brewers Giants – or no, sorry, Brewers A's. Um. Milwaukee has Peralta on the mound, and uh, Oakland has uh, Sears on the mound, and he's one. He's left-handed, so it's obviously something you really like to look look at when uh, you got certain teams. Some some teams don't hit well against lefties, but uh, it's a good it's a good measure to you know something to measure out when you're when you're looking at some of these matchups, especially on Sundays, because you know obviously you have it's typically the back end of your rotation. I know Gauss was pitching for the Blue Jays, but uh, it's just because of how many games they had this week. Um, but, yeah, Peralta's been hot and cold, and Sears hasn't had a good season. I mean, really, I don't think there's a single Oakland A's pitcher I'm avoiding this year. So um, I love Owen Miller, and I love Christian Yelich for two-plus total bases at least. Um, I'll probably do some variations of those. And then uh, Ryan Noda, Brent Rooker, and Astori Ruiz. So – we got plenty of action this weekend. There's a lot of good matchups, though, man. We got some premier matchups. San yeah, Diego, well, you, Colorado you that. is another one. San Diego and Colorado Sunday. You heard it here first. Yeah, man. San Diego just. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm done. I'm about done with them personally. Very, very fraudulent team. Yeah. Yeah. I was told they're contenders. They can't even. They have so many guys that just cannot bat. They cannot hit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think um, I'll probably stay away from them. But you like, you know, you you're liking a lot of total bases. You're yeah. over. You you. I know you'll put together some over one point five hits, runs, and RBIs kind of stuff that that we get on DraftKings. Yeah. Yeah. Typically, um, I actually do like a few variations. So, like, for every guy that I really like their matchup, I'll do one hit, um, two hits, two total bases, and then some of them I'll throw in for the doubles plays. But any guys that I any guys that I flat out come out and say I like this guy for two total bases, I'm I'm taking like multiple variations of of his plate appearance possibility. So I'll do one hit, yeah, one hit, two hits, two total bases, and a double. And then power hitters obviously throw the either the four total bases or the home run. Yeah, and I think just you know one of the things I want to make you know for for those watching, those listening that that aren't as into baseball, I say yeah. on the betting side, like that's that's just a really key thing um, sure. that DJ's mentioned. They're like these these things are obviously yeah. If, they get, if if the guy's gonna hit a home run or if he's going to have a good night, he's going to hit all of these, all of these right. metrics that you're talking about, but it's just totally different. Exactly. Yeah. Outcome. Betting is definitely very different in baseball. And if you, if you don't know what a, you know, two total bases is, um, you get a batter gets one base for every type of hit he gets. So an extra base hit, if he gets a double, he'll get two total bases triple is three home run is four. And then obviously, you know, your single is one. Um, so betting total bases is typically your, your way of kind of giving yourself a safety net. If you think a guy like Shohei Otani is going to come out there and hit a homer, 
but you don't want to risk it. Um, you can always run him for two total bases to where you, you give yourself the chance of him possibly getting two singles or, or a double with, you know, that possible home run going off the wall. So yeah. I and I think, too. yeah. And I think that's a key thing, right? Like the, the home run is going to be a plus 300 plus 400, whatever, something like that. Yeah. For, like I, yeah you know, dependent yeah. on the, the player. Um, whereas the hit, the singular hit, is just going to be minus 200, minus 300 for someone like Otani. Yeah, um, even Cattell Marte. Even, yeah. Cattell Marte was minus 475 today for one hit. Watch him go 0 for 4. <laughs> and, yeah, so that was saying, so you could, you, you've you got the two ends of the spectrum, right, in terms of what they can do with that one hit, but taking the total bases play kind of, it means that you're covered if they hit the double. You know, you're basically winning if that one hit is a double, triple, or a home run. You've cashed. If he only hits a single, then you've given yourself an opportunity that if he comes up again and gets any type of hit, exactly. that two singles is going to cash you your two total bases. Now, obviously, you're going to get into the realms of, oh, hey, well, two hits is bigger odds than two total bases which it is, but two hits is a harder thing to do than hitting a, a yeah, double, triple, harder. a home run. Yeah. So People don't realize just, how how in, uh, unlikely guys are to get multiple hits in a game. It's happening a lot, though. You say that. You say it's it unlikely, is. which it is. This year, this, yeah. this year, we're seeing it happen. We're seeing a lot of a lot. anomalies this year. This year's been awesome. It's probably the best year of MLB baseball in forever. Yeah, and I think, you know, like you've said that, like I'm I'm learning still from you like every day, every week. And I think the key thing for the guys listening, for those watching, if they have questions, like oh, we yes. said at the beginning, just just ask away. Like Yeah, literally. Pru is happy to to answer any of those questions. Um again on the Twitter, um, you know, or on the the YouTube stream, if you post your questions in the comments. Um, after you've liked and subscribed, obviously, of course. Um, and then yeah, we'll, on we'll Twitter, yeah, don't go to mine. Don't go to mine. Go to playing with house money. I will answer you there. Yeah, and yeah, like we're gonna absolutely put some some articles or some short videos just around the introduction to kind of baseball betting um, for anyone that's new to it, anyone that that has those types of questions. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Stay tuned for that. But yeah, if you have the questions in the meantime, or if you really like a guy or, you know, the team that you follow or the game you're watching, you you want to ask some questions or, or pick Prue's brain over who he likes in a certain game, then absolutely just don't ask him to bet K's. You know, <laughs> you can sometimes. Don't listen to him. It ha It just has to be a really good, really good matchup. And yeah, even, you know, I'm, I, to be honest with you, you can you can message me if you just want to say hi. I could always use some friends. But anything, yeah, anything play related, uh, analysis, stats, uh, guys, I'm leaning towards stuff like that. Yeah, just go to uh, pw underscore house money on Twitter, and I'll uh, I'll get back to you asap. No worries. Sounds good, my man. So, what is on the spot now? One player. The one player, the the one player that you're taking across the board this weekend. Oh, just not, not across not across the board all weekend, but just if you're only picking one player from either Saturday or Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah. You're... There are and there are multiple guys I'm taking both days. Yeah, but which which one? Ronald narrow Acuna. it down to one. Ronald Acuna Jr. I can't narrow it down to one. It's right. It's it's Acuna and Freddie Freeman every day. I'll run both of them. I'll run both of them 162 games a year, and I'm gonna expect them to to green the, the the leg every time. Sounds good to me. And go um, Luis Robert, by the way. Um, <laughs> thanks, buddy. So yeah, if you'd like to support the show or the Toilets to Titles team, and you want to become part of the Title Tribe, uh, you can check us out on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com forward slash toilets to titles it's a dollar 50 per month for base level entry into gilded which is where you will get access to all of the toilets to titles team uh, all of the 
the Title Tribe chats. There'll be our betting channel that you'll have access to. You get guaranteed entry into Frankenstank, which is the, the T2T guys uh, fantasy football league which we will talk about in more detail over the coming weeks um, because it's just an insane league. Um, the amount of rules, the amount of stuff these guys are doing with a fantasy football league is is insane. So, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that over the coming months. But, again, if you have any questions about it or if you want to get involved, like we say, head to the Patreon or you know, give us a – uh, shout us on Twitter and we'll let you know some more information about that. Um, but as we move on now to my look forward to the weekend, the biggest game in club football, club soccer, sorry, um, is, is Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's the Champions League final. So this is Manchester City versus Inter Milan. It's the it's the premier club competition in world in world soccer. Um, the Champions League. It's the you know European football has historically been the the pinnacle of of soccer, and this is the the best club sides in Europe that have competed over the season to get to this point. Um, you know, Manchester City have already won the Premier League in England. They've won the FA Cup. So this is now them chasing history to win that treble. Uh, the only other uh, English side to do that were their crosstown rivals, Manchester United, who did that in 1999. So it's something that, again, like, Certainly for me, English teams don't do very often. Um, to see it happen twice in my lifetime will be quite an impressive thing. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be 24 years since that happened. So Manchester City on on the precipice of history. Uh, into Milan, who they face, they've not had the best season in Syria in Italy. Um, they didn't win the league. Napoli ran away with it. Um, so this is kind of... This is what their season rests on, right? Like for for inter for internationally supporters, like there's there's a lot of big sides in Italy, like but they all expect nothing less than you know absolute victory, basically. So yeah. the fact that they've struggled in the league, or not struggled in the league, but they Napoli were runaway winners of yeah. Syria. So yeah. You know, this this is what it comes down to. It's kind of, you know, the difference, but fine line between success and failure for these players, for the manager. So there's a lot a lot on the shoulders of, of both these sides. But from a betting perspective, I really I really don't see any other outcome other than a Manchester City win. These this team this year have been unbelievable for the most part. They've, they've got some chinks in their armour, absolutely. You know, they're not unbeatable. They're not Arsenal of of yesteryear, who 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 went the whole Premier League season unbeaten. But like they've they've had a couple of a couple of losses. Um I mentioned that last week in in our Discord chat before the FA Cup final that kind of they were coming into that game on the back of a couple of not so great results at the end of the Premier yeah. League season. They they'd wrapped up the league well before that yeah. game, yeah, they so they've kind of team. taken the foot off the gas a little bit. So sure. they were coming into that. They managed to not let that phase them. They they got the win there, and I expect them to go up a gear this weekend. So your obvious obvious bets of Erling Haaland to score. He likely, you know, he's he didn't score in the cup final. Oh um, wow! So yeah, that so was he's, so, so he's, he's going due, for right? he, he, Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. So he's he's probably the he's the obvious bet, you know, when you're looking at it. But and the the semi obvious bet that a lot of people are going to be looking at after the FA Cup final, who. I picked to score first in the FA Cup final. 
LK Gundogan. He's plus 900 again to score first. Him and Bernardo Silva. Silva's plus 950 to score first. I had him in the semi-final against Real Madrid. These these are the players that have stepped up in the big games for City. You know, Haaland will score every other game, if not more than that. But when it's been these these big games, the Real Madrid game, Champions League semi-final, it was Silva. When it's FA Cup final, it's Gundogan. These are the big game play. These are the players that have been around, you know, like the these are the the older generation. You know, Gundogan is potentially playing his last game for City. What better way to go out than to, you know, yeah. than to go out on on the high of winning the treble and not only scoring in the cup final, the, the FA Cup final, domestic cup final, but also the Champions League final. So he's plus 360 to score any time. The, the kind of the outside bet that I always used to play for, for City is Rodri. He's a holding midfield player, so he doesn't score many goals. But when he does, you know, and he's plus plus a thousand any time. I just kind of oh, really yeah. like that. What? As a, yeah, as kind yeah, of yeah, my, my yeah. outside bet. I think the one, the one area, if, if I'm going to, if I'm going to say that Inter Milan turn up, Inter Milan are great defensively. Historically, Italian teams have always been great defensively. Mm-hmm. They could, they could stop Man City scoring. I think they have to do that if they want to win the game because I don't really see them going hammer and tongs at Man City. And if Man City score two, like I really don't see Inter scoring three. Mm-hmm. Not even you know, even if it goes to extra time. But do you think that they can pitch a shutout? Or I could. I think it's not beyond the realms of possibility. You know, like Man City have. When I say that there's been a chink in the Man City armor, it's it's not necessarily just defensively. They've mm-hmm. had games this season, and and I've called out a number of these throughout the year in in the Discord where they'll have fifteen to twenty chances. Yeah, they'll yeah, hit the target saying, like... five or six times, but maybe score one goal, maybe not score at all. Like they've had those yeah. games where they've had 20 chances, they have 80% possession, but they do not score a goal. Now, right. that's up against Premier League sides. I mean, they the one I... Like, they struck, they drew with Nottingham Forest, who were promoted to the Premier League. It was their first season in the Premier League in, in probably, you know, in a long time, since the 90s, yeah. probably in 25 years. So they were thought of as the whipping boys of the league, you know, and, and Man City in, in one of the games last season... They they drew one one. They they scored one goal, but you know Inter Milan are a different a different beast defensively. You know they put Real Madrid to the sword. Real Madrid aren't great defensively. The Spanish teams are not good defensively. They again they are the team that are going to go normally head to head with you and, and go if you score two, well score three. Man City yeah. managed to shut them out, but Inter oh, Milan wow. are a different. Inter Milan are a different a different beast altogether because I think there is the potential that this could could be a low scorer, but it's only a very small yeah. potential, right? Like very very small. But I think the way I would cover that is is this way, and it's going out on an absolute limb here now. Inter Milan striker Edin Dzeko used to play for Manchester City. Oh shit! So you know I love a revenge narrative. Oh yeah, we love it. We love a revenge game. Yeah. So. For the ship too, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, you know, so I've I've looked and and Ed and Jeco to score is just plus plus three seventy, but I've oh, I've looked and I've placed Ed and Jeco to score first and Inter Milan to win one nil, plus seventy nine seventy five. Ed and Jeco to score first and Inter Milan win two nil is. Plus over plus fifteen thousand. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. I oh, let yeah. me be clear. When I say I've bet those two, I have very, very light. Oh yeah, for sure. They're very sure. light sprinkles. Like this is not. But I think that is the like if Inter Milan are to pull this off, 
and it's it's you know it's borderline borderline you're looking at it going impossible what are the odds of this game the money line the actual money line for man city is minus 220 money line so for in, 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 inter milan on the money line a plus 550 alone so this is very heavily favored the the draw is plus 360 yeah, right, I mean. so very heavily favored. But if and it, we've seen it, right? We've seen it happen in all sports. The underdog, Miami Heat, NBA Finals, eight seed should have been out in the play-in. Should have we've lost that game. Man City be, we've seen we've seen Man City be human. Yep, and and West this month. is this is a game where. Again, the expectation is they're not going to. They're going to turn up all of their players. KDB is going to pull the strings. But but there is a but, right? And and that's just what I'm playing just in case it happens. Defense wins championships. That is Honestly. what they say. And also, folks, do as I say, not as I do. Um, I... Uh... I'm I'm 100 percent certain I'm gonna put more money on his bet than he put on his own bet. So yeah, you see my slip, just don't be dumb like I am. No, so that aside, uh, that's not the only game Saturday night. In fact, it's not even my favorite game on Saturday. I've got three MLS games that I'm I'm really looking forward to. Um, 7:30, the early slate, 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Toronto at home to Nashville. Uh, Nashville have been in great form. They've won four on the bounce. They are they've scored two goals or more in all four of those. And on the money line, they're plus one sixty five. Uh, oh wow! You, you know, I think the MLS like the way the books, especially fan like the, I mean, this is using Fangio. Yeah. Odds, they're normally better for for soccer money lines and, and team totals. Certainly better than, than DraftKings on, on that regard. They don't the books don't seem to like very many away teams in the MLS. Oh okay. like home bias seems to be a like a real big thing. Huh. Now, I mean because let me put it to you this way Toronto have only won one game in their last eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, but how Toronto, are they? Toronto at home in in the month of May. They played four. They won one. They drew two. They lost one. They scored not, two goals. They scored I'm two goals that, in four games. Doesn't sound like they're that much better at home. No. So, and like I say, Nashville are coming into this on form. Like foot, soccer is a form game, right? You know, and yeah, I mean, Nashville. Like I said, they've won four on a bounce. They've scored two plus in all four of those. They're plus 164 to score two goals in this game. That I absolutely love. Um, yeah, there's team, a lot of these um, that are... Yeah, like match goals. Over 2.5 match goals is plus money. Plus 102 in that game. What? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... Oh, I love this game. Yeah, love that one on the early slate. And then the two late games on Saturday are... 10:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the is the late games. It's Vancouver against Cincinnati. That one could be an absolute monster for goals. Are, are they going to play that game? Oh, I, mm. how are the um? Well, Vancouver's all the way on the other side of the country. Oh, isn't it? okay. Yeah, I don't. I'm not good at geography. It's a valid point and something to watch out for. Um, again, if if the game is suspended then don't put it in yeah. <laughs> like all and, and i think that the key thing we're pulling we're going to point out here certainly with you know the scorers that i mentioned in the champions league and the guys that you mentioned on the mlb stuff is don't make these bets today oh yeah yeah wait for lineups at all times. wait for wait for the lineups Absolutely. to be announced especially when it is baseball and you're taking singular players to hit yeah. and soccer if you're you know if you're taking the team totals Go ahead, take the team total. Right, like that's right. that's absolutely fine. Catch, you know, yeah, lock in that props. value today. Any player props, but player props, the goal scorers that I've mentioned for the Champions League game, 
um, and the goal scorers that I'll mention in, in these three games, yeah, wait until they're confirmed in lineups because especially Fangio, Fangio are not good. In fact, they're completely just terrible at not voiding bets. And if you bet on a player to hit and they pinch it, then that still yeah. counts. If Draft you Kings take uh, DraftKings does that as well. I yeah. thought DraftKings voided them if they weren't in the starting no. lineup. If they don't start, yeah, no, if they don't start, they wait until the end of the game. Um, and I've even had, so you know, it's it's supposed to be, it gets voided if they have zero plate appearances. But if a guy goes out and um, hits a sack fly to bring an RBI in, like to bring a run in, um, like on the, on the lineup of the game cast, it'll say O for O with a sack fly, but that's a that's a plate appearance to the books. He just he popped out, but if the guy walks, and he's zero for zero because he walked, obviously everybody you know if you follow baseball, um, they don't consider a walk a plate appearance. Um, so if your guy goes to the plate four times and gets walked four times, he's zero for zero with four walks. That would get voided. But yes, I had Starling. I had Starling Marte come in in the ninth inning of a game. The Mets were up by five. They had no reason to pinch it at all, um, and he went zero for one, um, and lost me my bet by that one leg. So yeah, just wait for lineups, especially with baseball, um, and especially with my bets because sometimes I make my bets like the night before, and and then I end up with stuff like today where I have literally four guys out of ten not starting so yeah so again one of those do as i say not as i do moments yeah so yeah just definitely a big thing when we're talking individual player props is wait for lineups um same with this one yeah no like playing in canada you know with everything going on with the wildfires i don't right. think you know, the way you know this is affecting the east coast um vancouver further to the west um i don't think it will necessarily impact them but again, wait and see. But this game could, if it goes ahead this weekend, both these teams are in red hot form. Um, Vancouver last five home games, they haven't lost. They've won three, drawn two, scored 12 in those five games. Uh, Cincinnati away from home are one, three, drawn one, lost one. So they're in good away form. Vancouver are in great home form. I've literally got this down as like a two-two draw. Um, I, I, you know, it could be anything. Like I said, like Vancouver is they've scored, they've had seventeen goals for and against in their last five. Cincinnati have had fourteen. So the over two point five is kind of both teams to score an over two point five is minus one twenty one. That's kind of the oh yeah, so they know yeah yeah. So that's like the the entry level bet that I've gone for um, over 3.5 match goals is plus 164. Um, like and with, with what I'm doing, you know, you, once you start to follow, if, if you start to follow my bets, when I do this, you know, that I end up going with the symmetry. Yeah. All, and, all, all the way. Stuff like yeah. That. So Nashville are the away team, Cincinnati, Again, that's where the value is, I think. Like the, the books have Cincinnati money line at 230. I'm not too good. Like the draw is plus 260, and I, I think I prefer the draw. Like I said, I've got this one as 2 2, but therefore the, the team total for Cincinnati is, is plus 148 for them to score twice. And I just really like Cincinnati in this game for some reason. I don't know why. Um, yeah. And then. You've been torn Cincy a few times this year, I've noticed. Yeah. And they're kind of due. They're kind of yeah, due to, to, that. to not screw me. Um, you know I love that. And the last one on Saturday is San Jose against Philadelphia. And Philadelphia were insane last season. Um, got all the way to the Audi Cup final. They lost on penalties to, to LAFC, which was not ideal for them, obviously. But they they took a, a few weeks to 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 get themselves into this season. Yeah, you know, beginning of the up. season they were kind of rusty. Last four. <laughs> That's modest. Yeah, that is oh, modest. They're, yeah. they're pretty rusty. 
Yeah, that is modest. Um, they've won four on the bounce, though. They've scored 10 goals in those four games. They've conceded one. So I'm at the point where I'm quite happy to say that that Philadelphia of last season are kind of back. Um, San Jose, their last five league games, they've won one, drawn two, lost two. So again, I mean, giving me Philadelphia money line at plus 185, Team, yeah. to- team total for them to score twice at plus 142. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. So, I mean, all three of them on the money line is plus 2,400. Um, all three to score twice, the all three team totals, is plus 1,500. Oh, yeah, I'm all over that one. That one's the one that I will definitely be all over. Um, the one I, again, you know me, the symmetry, and then, you know, I like to kind of go one, two, three, four, or like ladder the, mm-hmm. the numbers. Yeah. Philadelphia team total to score twice. Then Toronto Nashville game over 2.5. So to have three goals and then four goals in the Vancouver Cincinnati game, the two, okay, three, yeah. four, yeah. is plus 1,200. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, I, I really like oh, that. Yeah. And then the goal scorers that that I'll be taking as as first goal. Sc- I'm going to round robin these guys as first goal scorers. So again, lesson for everyone that takes yeah. my anytime goal scorers that takes them as first goal scorers as well. You can take the three of them as a straight parlay for any time. I mean, on Twitter, I will shout out if there's like value in an anytime goal scorer, like there was. Uh, this week in the Europa League game, um, the the lowest value on a anytime goal scorer in that game was plus three hundred. So at that yeah. point, if you're giving me plus three hundred or more for anytime goal scorers, then exactly you can you can absolutely take them as straights. I mean, you can take any of these as straights, right? Like, let's be honest, like any of these bets that you really like, certainly the ones that are plus money. Absolutely take them as straights, pair them together as twos or threes. You don't have to take all three of them. Um, But yeah, with the goal scorers, definitely had a couple of times this season where I'm hitting two out of three in the round robins cashing, but people are taking the three parlay and only playing the three parlay. Um, And annoyingly, there was one and the guys in my in in here again luciano acosta for cincinnati will be around plus 900 first goal scorer on his own and so if he hits yeah like if he hits on his own it's yeah one all you need is one other and the other so for nashville it's haney mctar the guy like penalty taker he, you know, Acosta's the penalty taker like that you kind of find that i go with those guys because there's a lot of penalties in the mls um, but he's in red hot form as well. I think he is, if he hasn't scored in all four of the last Nashville games, he scored in three out of four. So he's in red hot form. And then for Philadelphia, I always get, there's two. There's the big dog, Danny Gazdag, who was my yeah. absolute boy last season. Danny. And there's Julian Carranza. And whichever way I go, it's always the other guy every week. Never like one week, they're both going to score and I'm going to love it because, but like, but right. it will be one of those guys. And I'm very tempted this week to just play both, like to just play two separate trebles yeah. and like take all four of those guys and round robin them by twos. So yeah, that's the, the goal scorers, but yeah, that that's on Saturday. And then I'll fly through these ones on Sunday. One, there's one. Um, my actual favorite MLS bet of the entire weekend is Sunday. St. Louis City. They're so still by the books underrated. They are absolutely flying. They've won their last three on the bounce. They've scored ten goals in three games, all at home. They're at home this weekend to LA Galaxy, who have been horrible. Um, in the league, they've conceded two in each of their last of three away games. Um, 
They conceded three against DC United. They conceded two against Columbus Crew. St. Louis are better than those guys. Like they, they're a brand new team. They were an expansion team this year, but they, they just don't give a, a an F. Like they right. come in and they're just getting un, like every week they kind of get under it. And I feel like I tweet every week and say like these guys are actually the real deal, and. You know, we cashed last week a free bet. I posted on Twitter two of them. Um, you know, goal scorers for them. Um, and the one I really love this week, you know, is them to score in both halves plus one seventy eight. It was plus one nine two last Saturday. Um, but yeah, like as the home team, they're they're minus one ten on the money line, which I think is an absolute hammer. If you're playing a straight this weekend, it would be that um or it's plus, minus 122 for them to score two plus goals and i really like them to actually score three at plus 285 yeah um and then so yeah that's that's like that's my favorite game of the weekend for actual like for home team goals and then the other league that we kind of have that i've loved in the discord recently is is the norwegian elite serian yeah. Like it sounds ridiculous, right? It's going, yeah, they're you know, but they're crazy. only they're a third of the way through the league, so it'll be going for the next couple of months. And this league, these guys, like I don't think they can defend. Yeah, they no. honestly, there are so many goals in this the league. Goals it's, are it's everywhere. A joke. Um, so the four games I'm focused on this weekend are stay back against Rosenberg. Love Rosenberg. They they came out last weekend basically screwed my bet last weekend by not conceding the only team that didn't concede in the league last weekend. So I'm a bit bitter about that, but we, we move away team total in that game over 1.5 plus 154 odds BK versus Mulder. Same thing. Away team total minus 146 love, love Rosenberg and Mulder as two away teams. And then if I was going to support another soccer team in Europe, it would be Bodo Glimt. They are unbelievable. These guys will cash me out every other week without fail. And yeah, you see why. Like their home team total is over 2.5 at minus 146. So, okay. you know, for them to score three goals, but they've, you know, sure. I mean, they're doing it in most games. Um, and then the last one is that they all those games kick off at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday morning. And then the one game that they have in the afternoon is 1.15 Eastern Standard Time is Bran against Lilstrom. Now, this one I, I was very torn about because Lilstrom are on the no bet list as a team. But I'm Bran a second in the league. They cashed me last weekend for a plus uh plus a thousand. I had Bran team total over 2.5 with Bodo Glimt. And I've got their team total at over 1.5 this week. They kick off basically the same time as St. Louis. So if you don't want to play them, dependent on how those first three games in Norway have gone, I might double Bran and St. Louis City because they kick off at the same time. And you know what I'm like with yeah. not wanting That's to wait cool. around. I want I right. want my 11 a.m. games to cash me and then I can go again. I don't want to have a, a parlay which has one and then I'm waiting on one leg three hours later. I just have no like, patience. Like my play with the Pirates and Ace today at eleven thirty and not another leg until five forty five. Yeah, basically. Um but yeah those games you you can take all four of those teams on the money line. That's Rosenberg, Mulder, Bodo Glimt and Bran. All four money line is plus six twenty five. All four games to have over two point five match goals at 584 I think is stupid value for the league like that you know that should be a lot lower if you push the Bodo Glimp game to over 3.5 which I normally do the value in the the parlay goes up to plus 864 um and then if you want to take those first three games the team totals the the two for Rosenberg and Mulder and the three for Bodo Glimp mm -hmm. it's plus 620 and if you include Bran in that the the late game, it takes it to plus nine nine six. But 
if you don't take Bran in that and you take just the plus 620, Bran and St. Louis, both over 2.5, is plus 1,000. I'm going to keep it real with you, brother. Anybody that just did not know any of these teams, they don't even know what the hell he's talking about. They don't know what leagues to find these teams at. They have no idea what a single soccer player's name is. We have a way that you can get every single play he just talked about. And all you got to do is holler at us on Twitter. Um, yeah. And or leave us some comments in the – leave us leave us questions in the comments section. Absolutely. Um, we'll be all over it. We'll be all over it for you. And, uh, and then, yeah, hit the Twitter. You can even Absolutely. you can even ask us right on the timeline, so all your followers get the answer as well. We we, we don't mind. Yep. So that's the one. Twitter is at pw underscore house money. Um. So yeah, you know, absolutely, just hit us up on the Twitter. We would love to answer your questions about any of that, especially me and Norwegian soccer. That you guys probably didn't even know that the Norwegians played soccer. Certainly not in the summer. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those leagues that's still going that is great. Like European soccer has ended. So well, for the most part, Norway is obviously not considered one of the elite leagues in, in Europe. But they um, make money. But they make me a lot of money. And hopefully they can make you guys a lot of money as well. Um, and, and you can always go to the Twitter to make sure we're not lying to you. And yep. you scroll down, whatever the date for Saturday was, find that date, go to Twitter, look at everything that we have either tweeted or retweeted on that date. And if that doesn't convince you that you have, uh, you're have, you already late to the party, well, then nothing will. And really, it's probably going to take you a little while just to get down to Saturday because uh, my boy Ice here has been absolutely going insane this week. And also, I am self-proclaimed the live bet king, yeah. But before I ever did anything to do with the live bet king, um, I gave this man the title of the soccer king, the soccer goat. Uh, no, absolutely nobody that you follow on Twitter can hold my boy's jockstrap with, this, with the soccer bets. So uh, beat us there. Don't meet us there. Yes, sir. That being said... That's episode one. Thank you very much for listening, watching. If you made it all the way through, we appreciate you. Yeah, I'm um, sorry, y'all. You know, again, any questions, hit us up on the Twitter, comment on the YouTube. Come say hi. Come say hi. We don't bite. Um, good luck with any and all bets that you're placing this sure, weekend. Yes, sure. um, feel free to let us know, you know, show us your winners. Show us what you put. Like, if you've placed yeah. a bet and you want to know our thoughts on it, absolutely tag us. Show me your uh, play. I'll yep. tell it. We'll, we'll tell your plays. You never know. You could be sat with us, you know, in a few months' time. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you on the show. And, and once you that. see what happened Saturday, you'll understand why we called the show Playing With House Money. Um, yep. I think it's all we've been doing for, I don't for know a while now. Ago. And, yep, we'll see you all next Friday when we're playing with more house money 11 a.m noon no uh, yep eastern and central so every friday all right boss take it easy you too you too later <laughs> <laughs>